Hello! Let's see if this is working. Looks like we've got audio going in. Wait for that AVOK -okay from Home to Pimp and Co. So, hey, Home to Pimp, hey, Darius, hey, Shimera, hey, Electrical Skateboard, hey, Infinisil. Ah, I think that's our lot for so far. How you all doing? AV, you okay? Nice. Right. Um, yeah. It's been a kind of productive week, so I actually want to dump a bit of information on you. Um, off stream last time, I did some optimization on this, and, well, optimization, I moved some shit around, and we got some more speed. I'm going to get to that, but the first thing I want to do is kind of uh, dump on you what I've been working on. So the main stuff has been in Vario. Um, so, let's see, where do we start with this? I had some... <laughs> some interesting profiling uh, cases where someone dumped a uh, 27,000 line GLSR, like a uh, Lisp function uh, in the compiler and it was slow. And it was slow for really stupid reasons. So we got that down to something semi-reasonable, um, but still, madness. It was just thousands of nested um, local functions and then a case switch on them. It was nuts, but very fun. To, it was like one of those things where you can... You can imagine a rewrite of it, but it's also a really good use case for um, profiling and stuff like this. So, certain areas of uh, Vario are now much faster. Um, again, thousand line functions in 0. point very small numbers um, of a second, which is great um, because I mean, like every little improvement helps us. It's it's not a really big deal, and Vario as a compiler is still slow compared to like real compilers, but it's still pretty nice. So, other than that. I have started work on a user guide um, because, again, I've been asked about getting the compiler documented, so I've made a bit of an effort for that. Um, some of the pages are kind of basic, and some of them, like the ones that actually um, cover using the compiler, are a bit longer. Um, it's still that the guide stuff is really hard. That's very work in progress. Um, that stuff's going to be going to be going on. Uh, Shimera is saying real compilers are slow because they do useful things. Thank you, Shimera. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, my one's slow and doesn't. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right, and um, then I've actually got around to doing the reference documentation. So there are two sets of reference docs. There's the stuff for Vario, um, which is the compiler itself. So this, again, it's not perfect, and I spotted just before the stream that I've... Uh, some of them are actually unfinished. I got like down here somewhere. I'll actually find the ones that are wrong. A lot of these are actually fairly well documented. And then these two, it lets you define. Ooh, good. I'm glad it lets me define. What the fuck does it let me define? So yes. So we've got some um, some reference docs for the compiler. Um, we've also got some reference docs for the language. Now the way I went about this is. Like, a lot of the standard library is just GLSL. Um, so we have combined the Lisp name, the Lisp, um, like, overloads and type signatures, and then with GLSL docs. So when we jump over to here, um, of course, we have to point out that the GLSL part of this documentation, so things like this, anything after, after the phrase GLSL documentation, um, is from the official GLSL documentation and copyright to the Kronos group as per this thing, pointing this thing. Um, but what it does mean is we have a lot of documentation now, which is really quite nice. So these are for the variables, and then we get into functions like this. You can see that ABS had 20 overloads, and you can actually see what they are rather than decoding stupid naming. Um, what, ve what versions are available, descriptions, all that jazz. And it goes on for quite a while. Um, I'm actually not going to scroll all the way down. Oh yeah, actually, that's a good point. Not everything is formatted brilliantly right now. Um, this is just an artifact of how I extracted this documentation. Um, if you'd like to help with that, this is one of the areas that you can be non-technical and definitely help with these projects. In fact, help with a number of projects. Um, if you find the, what's it called, GLSL spec project. Let me go and find it. Da, 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 da. GLSL spec. Um, here we go. This is um, a good chunk of the GLSL language specification um, as data. 
So under functions.lisp, you can find um, information. I think I've talked about this on one of the streams before. All the functions, all the names, all the types, um, and all, all of the uh, type names expanded, so you get all of the overloads in actually concrete types rather than in gen type and stuff like this. All of the versions that are supported. Things like that. Any change that you make to this project automatically benefits Vario, benefits Keppel, benefits anyone else who's consuming this. This doesn't rely on Keppel or Vario, so it can be used by any project. Um, we also export all the same information as JSON so that um, other people can benefit from that from languages that are more likely to be consuming JSON. Um, and then for the documentation, there is a docs folder and you can find all of the documentation as text files. Uh, and more pertinent to us, if I didn't jump to the wrong place, um, all of the doc strings we're using in Lisp. So if there's a style problem, um, you can fix it here, submit a PR, and you're going to help stuff, help a variety of projects, which is cool. A variety of projects. My projects, probably. Uh, there might be other people using this stuff, but um, evidence is rather lacking on that front. So we've got a shit ton of documentation for the GLSL part. Also for the common list part, uh, which is way down here, I've um, tried to do some documentation for that as well. It's pretty similar, if not exactly the same, to the common uh, the hyperspec stuff, um, with tweaks obviously made for things that are rather different. Uh, but yeah, we've got some documentation now. I know Pom Pimp was asking if we're going to have Keppel uh, style documentation, which by meant massive doc strings, and yes, we are. And yes, we have. And more importantly, because that stuff is handy online, um, but a lot of the time you're working in the REPL, you can also do Vari describe and give it a function, like give it a symbol, and it will give you the documentation for that. And um, in many cases, it will give you, so, I mean, it works for record, so that it works for variables, and it does work for functions as well. So if we do something like smooth step, or what's just step in general, actually? Here's one of the places with the dodgy formatting. Um, you can get the documentation. Now, what's kind of strange on this one is I thought I had, maybe I haven't pulled this yet. I've made a tweak on a branch, I guess. Um, so in these documentation strings, we also get the Lisp overloads because that's quite helpful when you're writing this stuff. Uh, but yeah, we've got, we've got a bunch of stuff. What else have I been doing? I can't remember. Um, yeah, profiling documentation. I've um, there's a Wayland um, compositor called a Lubis, uh, which is using Keppel, which I'm going to be doing some fixes for. Um, it's just there's bug fixes going on in a variety of places, and I'm going to keep doing that throughout my whole day. Um, there's a there's a shit ton of stuff to do, and I'm trying to get it out of my head in preparation for starting this new job. Um, but yeah, we'll see how that goes. Cool. Um, Chimera says useful is relative to goal. Stop being right! If your goal is to compile C++, then sure. If your goal is to develop quickly, then probably not. Um, oh, sorry, that was in response to uh, Darius saying, so you consider compiling C++ useful? Yes, I fucking do. Um, I rely on a lot of that code in different places. Um, cool. So, yes. Um, last week we were doing some... Um, Doing some rendering stuff. We were doing instancing and we were getting a reasonably okay number of instances up. So we have, if we look at the actors uh, table, if we get hash, what's the name of this actor kind? Foo from actors. We get a shit ton of actors. Uh, let's look at actors current. That's the array we're interested in. Um, and if we get the length of that, uh, we can see there's currently 3,000 in there. And we're running with a few tweaks. We're now running at something like 400, 500 FPS. Um, this obviously allows us to call Hacky Test a few more times. So um, it, there's another 3,000. We're running at 200. Um, let's throw in another 3,000, another 3,000. So, yeah, you know, we've got 12,000 going now. And FPS should still be quite reasonable. Yeah, let's keep going. Hack Test. So 15,000, we're getting down to 95 FPS. So that's where things are starting to get a bit slow. Um, I think at this point, yeah, 
Okay, so we can get 20,000. Whoops, shit. That was not what I intended to do. Um, I wanted to get back to length. So yeah, we've, <laughs> we've got 21,000 running at 60 frames a second and a bit. Um, so that's all right. That's more than we're going to need. But um, the point was just, like, if we, if we can get, like, a shit ton done, <laughs> um, then we can do a lot less being a lot more expensive. Uh, and there is just nothing to this code at the moment. So yeah, anyway, that's just to prove that um, some things got a little bit faster from where we were. I think we were around 70, 80 FPS with 6,000 on the last stream. So what we'll do quickly is just go through what those changes were. And it doesn't matter if it means we don't get as much done this time. I'd rather go through this stuff on stream because otherwise it feels like, oh look, things are fast now, you know? Like, and I don't think that's what people are tuning in for is just like, look at me, I worked out a thing. Um, let's have a look. Here we go. Um, so, what I'd like to do if I can is split this. I want to go to actors because that's where all the action is. And we've got some changes. There's a couple of trivial changes. I've moved um, the FPS stuff into um, update actors just because I was needing it all the time. So it may as well live there rather in, than in uh, the god actor um, because I was adding and destroying actors all the time. And I just didn't want that interfering with measurements. Um, there was a little reformatting here. Let me just go to that version. So this is the version that we had um, last week on stream. And this is the version post some changes. Um, so what have we moved around? We've moved, uh, I can see the current actors up here and the count has moved up. That's just so we're not accessing that a couple more times. Doesn't really make much difference. Um, down here, um, we don't. We just don't check the length of uh, current actors anymore. Um, we're looping through it, so if there's none of them, um, yeah, if there's none to loop through, that's not going to cost us much anyway. We're not optimizing for that case. We're optimizing for loads, or at least more than none. Um, the per actor C data. Um, oh yes, okay, so last week, um, did I just rename that variable? Let's have a look. Ah, so this was one version where we were writing things into a C array and then copying them over. That looks like we're still doing that. Yes, okay, we've just moved this guy up to the top as well, up here. Okay, so no change there. Um, loop through a bunch of stuff, uh, write some data, increment the count. Um, when the count is greater than zero, of course, we push the data. I was worried that this was going to be the issue, and it really isn't. Hey, love like Semtex, good to see you, man. Um, okay, I'm going to do what Darius says. One second. I'm going to potentially screw up my magic stuff, because I didn't do this after he said last time. So let's... Uh, I'm going to do this in Scratch because I don't want to edit my um, really messy .emacs file on here just in case I left anything in there I shouldn't have, like passwords, which I did another time like a fucking idiot. Like, you know, plain text passwords, but it, it was for something irrelevant, but it was still dumb. Um, I think I moved all that over to SSH stuff now anyway, but... Magit, diff, refine, um, hunk, or... So what have, oh shit. what have I done now? Oh, okay. Ooh, okay. So that's actually just a lot more focused on what has changed. Um. Hey, Phil Fogg, good to see you. Okay, that's cool. Thank you, Darius. I will. Uh, I'll have to play with that some more as well. Where's our other version of actors? Oh, come on. There you are. So in here, not much changed. Uh, and when I measured things, I saw that the pushing of stuff really didn't make any difference. Also, combining these two loops. Um, so here we loop over once and we update the actors. 
and then we I'm pushing it into a array, and then we loop over it another time, and we write the um, actor data. Combining these two loops makes it slower. So we don't want to do that in this case. And it's nice to be able to see that. Let's see if we can actually just uh, see that effect ourselves. So we're sitting around 60 something. Um, let's just do this. It's the nice thing to be able to do these tests live. So rather than just talking about it, we go from 60, 68-ish to, oh, oh no, now we're down into the 50s. So we're now we're in low 60s, high 50s. And then we change this back again. And now we're back into the mid 60s and we're not dipping down to the 50s anymore. So again, um, not everything's exactly how you would expect um, when locality and things like that come into play. I'm not gonna pretend to know what it was in this case, but yeah, that had an effect. Let's jump back to last week's one. Because, oh, actually, I'll bring up that diff again. Because, where are we? Oh, why did I leave so many things open? Um, sure? No. Diff for daft. Yeah, it was a diff for daft. Yeah, there we go. Oh. Oh, maybe it was a log. Ah, it was a log. No, nope, wasn't that either. What was it? Fine. I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember where I stuck that file. Let's go, um... Come on now. Let's go bring that change up again. It was a diff, and it was this one. Get rid of that. Okay, that's this week's... That's the changes. So, other than that loop, which we just kind of restructured very slightly and yacked on about how combining the loops didn't make it faster, um, we then went down and made large changes to write actor data. So let's go and look at that. And basically it was a cop-out. Rather than trying to make this faster, I just put it out and moved loads of things to the GPU. So here you can see we're calculating the UV mod um, on the CPU side. Uh, so this is this is um, calculating things for the UVs for the frame of animation we're in. Uh, we were doing that here and we were writing in, look, what were we writing? We were writing in the transform, we are writing in the size, um, and the transform was a matrix. Um, we are writing in the size, we are writing in the UV scale and the UV offset which came from this. And now we write in uh, the position, the rotation, and the current animation frame. Um, and that's all that's going into that um, into that buffer. So if we go and look at, actually, if we just jump to render, it's probably in there. Let's go and look at render. And it'd be really good if we can look at the old render as well. So where's render in here? Here's last week's render. We can see that the data we're packing in obviously has changed. So our struct has changed. Um, we're now just packing in a vector three and two floats rather than a lot more than that. Um, and then, Oh yes, this is fun stuff, actually. Ah, I will... Did I manage to close that again? Oh, it's called a revision. Nice, all right. Um, let's jump back to... Here's the code that we had running on the CPU. And then we've just moved it over to the GPU with very few changes. Um, we're still taking the mod of anim frame, yada, yada, yada. The names have changed from TX to tile count X because it was a bit more descriptive, but the code is pretty much the same. Um, I don't know why we bother unpacking it before we, yeah, I'm, I'm using with slots here rather than in this function. Don't know why, but that's how it is. But it's nice that we could just move this code over and just run it on the GPU. And that's kind of all I did was just, um, yeah, move a bunch of this stuff to the GPU. So here we end up unpacking things like the position and rotation. We do the rotations here ourselves. Um, so yeah, we're not just multiplying a matrix, but this also just works out to be way better. We're not, yeah, there's, there's loads of things you can complain about it, but 
it's working it's running faster that's all we need and that was kind of cool so those are the main changes um we decided not to make it faster on the cpu side and instead to just punt and throw it onto the um gpu instead that's a catch up um nice right so i don't want to be dealing with this test anymore because it's really boring um we're going to go back to our little um, other boring test which was the space one i'm just gonna restart everything because i can it doesn't take too long and yeah test alien did i change anything in here i thought i did Ooh, i done goofed All right, let's open Actors again. Discard that hunk and go down to update Actor and recompile that. Cool. Let's get into our package again and we'll say daft and start, which is how we start this little thing. And then we can go over to test.lisp and compile this and for... So oh, not that one. That's not the one I want. Test.alien, can I just do this? Oh, yeah, but... <laughs> now it's absolutely tiny. Um, and that is because in the other test file, I changed the size, the screen height in game units. So let's change it back to whatever it should be. I don't know. Like 600 or so? Yeah, that looks about right. And if all is well, this should still be working. And these controls are horrible. Actually, let's let's fix that. I was been musing about this stuff um, before the stream. One thing I'm going to just do is set the clear color because it's really boring just having that black. Set of clear color. Just anything is better than that. Let's just have that gray. Have something a little darker, but then the uh, video compression just goes, Oh, it's black now! Cool! And just does black, which is annoying. So, all of our... Posi like, we don't expose position to the actors. They don't know where they are in world space. They only can find, like, distances and directions to other things that they've queried for. Um, but one area where this really sucks is if you want to do um, kind of N Newtonian kind of physics stuff. So... If we put some thrust in a direction and then point in another direction, we just shouldn't carry on with it. We shouldn't take that momentum around the corner, right? Uh, this isn't portal. So what we wanted to have is a world space vector. And I thought about wrapping that up in some fancy way, but then all of a sudden you're having to use slightly different functions, like, like have dedicated, like, Here's a, like a compass direction or something like this, which isn't the worst, maybe in the worst name, but it was more just like, oh, here's a special vector that you can't combine with the other ones. So you don't try and add together world space vectors and your local vectors. It just became a pain in the ass. So what we're going to do now is um, just concede that these things need to be in world space. And we're just going to give them silly names. So we're going to say defun. Um, what shall it be? Um, compass angle and this is rather than ju just saying world space so we don't have to explain that what that is compass takes a direct an angle relative to somewhere and it's just gonna be straight up for us so compass angle um, is going to be just rotation I guess oh wait a second we haven't got the um, what is it concurrent oh I can't remember things Design, enable, concurrent, hints. It's my own function. I can't remember it. Um, yeah. So compass angle. Now if we go to our tests stuff again, we get our ship. Um, and we just say print compass angle. Um, we'll get that. It's currently in radians, which we won't do because we're doing everything in degrees for the users. So let's go and change that into degrees.
Good enough. That'll do. And then um, I would like to be able to get that as a direction as well. So, um, direction two actor. I just wonder if we had a function made for this already. I guess not. Must do actually, wait a second. When we do spawn, we Yeah, move forward. There we go. Oh, really? That's very lazy. Okay. <laughs> oh, well, we'll fix that up later. Thief on compass, dear. And should we allow someone to specify a... A range, maybe? That'll save a multiply every now and again, so... No, distance, yeah. Distance is much better. Okay. So hopefully down here, now we can do compass direction. And then we can just point in a direction and we get a vector for it. Cool. That's going to be useful because now, in, like speed, can be a vector two or a vector three. It doesn't really matter. Um, ah, but we're going to need to be able to move in a compass direction as well. So whenever we, where's our um, trigger? Where is it? 1D, pad 1D? Yeah, game pad 1D uh, control, which is the um, trigger on the back. So we can say, V2 increment speed by, um, the direction vector, so that, that'll be that compass direction we were just talking about, multiplied by um, whatever's currently on the pad. Let's see what that does. Whoa, okay. That is going to be something sensible. Oh, wait a second. Was the... No, the compass... Oh, yeah, that's a, this is a bit shitty. Okay, so the compass direction that we're returning is actually a VEC3, um, which we don't want. So we'll go and rewrite that in a second, actually. Um, and then we're getting a type error from non consig plus, which is... Oh, yeah, down here. We're um, leaving some old code around. And that wasn't it, apparently. Um, interesting. What did I cock up? So this should be a VEC2. We're doing a VEC2 multiplied by a scalar. This should be a scalar. And it's saying that this is not a single float. Possible that this wasn't a single float? Actually, what we can just do is, um, oh yeah, I guess we won't, hmm. Where are you getting that from? Ah. Oh yeah, and it's moving forward by, uh, Okay, yes. This expects a float as well, or rather a real in this case. Um, so 
that's not going to be right anymore. We need a new function for doing the movement. Right, cool. So everything's back to life at least. I'm going to brain fart. Okay. Um, we want this to be a vector. And it's just going to be... Um, Angle is whatever the current rotation is for, come on, where are you? Self. Is it sine ang cos ang? Can't remember. Or cos ang sine ang. We'll fix that in a minute. Not a problem. Distance is defined by never used. That is true. Um, and we will do vector 2, and we're going to do a non cons ang um, modifier. So we're going to multiply it by a scalar. And do this. Um, this is going to uh, mutate this vector. Um, if we jump to that definition. Oh yeah, there was something else I did this week. Um, apart from the documentation and the profiling, I'll show you that in a second. Um, yeah, that's going to go and mutate this vector that's passed in. Anything with the hyphen n in the package name from the maths library is going to do that. Let's see what's going on the channel. Sorry, I've been ignoring you guys for a bit. Um, hello, hello, hello. 60 FPS is good for a AAA game. <laughs> Let's contact the industry right away. Yes, I'm sure they'll be delighted to uh, slowly not do much with these sprites. <laughs> um, <laughs> Love Like Sentex is, say, uh, is saying, after several months, I'm still laughing at the uh, a face. It seemed appropriate. Um... I wonder when we'll make a Hieronymus Bosch themed game. Dude. I, I'm still enjoying that picture. That there was um Wikipedia have taken it down now. They 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 have the art the Garden of Earthly Delights um page and picture, but the the version they used to have up there was uh forty thousand pixels by thirty so, like it was ridiculously huge. And uh, now it's a more reasonable like I don't know. Might be a four K picture or something like this. It's ah. Oh. But it's so good when it's massive because you can zoom right in and you can see all the paint cracks and just look around and see what's going on. I've been staring at that picture for the best part of a year and I'm still enjoying it. Um, uh. Oh yeah, we can't expect the user to be passing in the uh, right type, so we'll fix that up for them. And... Be fun. Move in. Should we do move in compass deer or compass deer move? Compass direction move. Let's try that. Um, and then direction, which is going to be a vector. Um, and we'll just say B3. Um, Actually, where is it? Let's just do pos is where is it? The position of self um, ink x of pos by x of direction. Do the same for y. And then we'll return nil because we don't want to hand back the world space position. I'm still really wanting to stick by that. Um, so this is going to be compass deer move. Um, let's see if this works now. Okay, that didn't crash. Um, and then. Let's get rid of this print. That's not going to help us. Actually, maybe it will. Let's uh, let's bring this print back and just see what we get if we. Oops. Were to have this function in there, this call in there, form, whatever. I can words. So. Every time I accelerate, I get a little burst, and then it's zero, which is roughly what we want. Whether it's the right direction or not, we're about to find out, because I wasn't paying attention to that print, because we don't need to do that. Who needs to pay attention? Um, nope, it's wrong. 
But it is actually keeping... Oh, God, we're off now. <laughs> it's fucked. Okay. It's out there somewhere. We'll have to go rescue it in a minute. Um, let's, uh... Whoops. Continue. Let's go have a look at the position of... I wonder what its name was. Um, let's look at our actors again. Because it's really easy to talk to him when you know what his name is. John. Hello, John. Right. Let's, um... John, hello. Right. Um... Hey, John. Oh, hey, Kenneth. You will learn to type without looking at the keyboard, you son of a bitch. Right. Um, let's use our... Come on now. Um, it re we really don't want to be able to fuck around with that position, do we? <sighs> you make an API and it just fucks you over when you're trying to do, do debugging. Right. Position yourself. Right, whatever. There we go. Oh, that's a ways out now. It's just drifting. Oh yeah, because the speed never decreases. That's good. Um, so that's going to be fun as soon as we set this to set f um, this guy to zero zero zero. He's just going to go off again. Look at him go. Set f speed v two times s. Do we have a, a mult f? A V2? No. Of course we don't. <laughs> that would be stupid. 0 0.99. Let's do that. Bring him back. Oh, is that it? Hey, you know what? That'll do for now. It's pretty bad. <laughs> but we can thrust in a direction and then point around. Ah, oh, but of course the directions are wrong. So let's set and point in one of them. So if we're meant to be going down this away, and we go down that away. It's like minus sign, isn't it? Wait a second, we've got a rotate function. Why are we doing this? Um, oh yeah, because we were just trying to construct it. Let's just look at what V2 rotate was. Fine. Oh no, it's like me, like from angle. Oh, negative angle sine a cos a. Okay. Um, and we could totally just use that function. Use your goddamn API. Right. Um, and write code that makes sense. All of these things will bring you closer to success one day. There we go. Much nicer. So now we can actually thrust around a bit, boost away before we smash into them, and absolutely nothing happens because we haven't got collision anyway, which is meant to be the point of this episode, but I've still got more things <laughs> I better tell you about. Um, and that was, okay. Um, the other week we were talking about the idea of maybe just moving all of the gameplay onto the GPU. And I thought, if we're going to do that, then it actually makes a lot of sense. Like, for that to make sense, we need to be able to have pretty much the same code as we do now. Like, the user API is going to have to be very similar. Um, and seeing as we're using my maths library, the, um, where is it, RTG Math one, um, I decided that we needed GPU versions of all the functions, or at least majority of them. So, the way this project is structured normally is there's things like vectors and matrices. If you go in them, you have generic ones which are dynamically dispatched on length and it's horrible and slow, and you have these sized ones. Um, inside there you have consing and non-consing versions, ones that the consing is going to allocate, non-consing are going to mutate an existing um, object. We can go in here and we've got a load of functions. and. Um, this is just a helper macro that is part of this project, which lets me set the types and return types in line rather than having to write 
this stuff, where you'd have to do a declaim and a declare on the inside and stuff like this. Um, so that's all that that defin is. It's just a shorthand. So what I now have is if we... Let's leave this guy open. Who's this? This is vector 3 consing? Sure. Let's go back to the root again. You'll see there's a folder called Vari. If you go in there, it's pretty familiar. We have vectors and matrices and quaternions and shit like that. You can go inside. Um, they have sizes. And then there's only the consing versions because that... The, the compilers... Because it's a statically compiled language, GLSL can do a lot of optimizations to, to the point where we don't really have to worry about having to mutate things as an optimization. Um, or at least not in the same way. So in here, we have um, the versions of all these functions that are going to work on the GPU. And some of them are um, pretty much just straight copy-paste code. So we, we just uh, change the defin into vdefin. Um, and we change VEC3 to the GPU version. And we don't have to specify the return type because it'll be inferred. And yeah, we've got the whole or the majority of the API um, working on GPU now, which is awesome. So um, if you wanted to try out, for example, quaternions on the GPU, um, you can just go in here and um, it's all defined. There's not every function. You can see there's a few of these I skipped because I just... Like, when you're doing this kind of stuff, it's drudge work. It really sucks. You should have a lot of alcohol on hand. And um, motivation is more important than completeness. So some of the things I skipped. But for the most part, we've got a lot of things to find. Um, so yeah, there's a bunch of stuff there. Not sure if it's really useful. Some of it is just straight up duplication and you should just use the standard GLSL functions. But you can copy, post co copy paste code. Um, now in a way that we couldn't do before, so that's kind of interesting. Um, I've steered away from doing the uh, move everything to compute um, for this project because then we're going to run into things like uh, divergence um, and certain rules of things that we're not allowed to do in regards to um, if statements, basically. And because this API is meant to be like technically, like it's meant to be fairly simple. Um, you should just be worrying about actors and I don't want you to have, then have to tell someone, oh, it's really simple, except, you know, like, um, if you do an if on a certain kind of thing, um, that's going to have horrible side effects that are undefined. They're just like, Ugh, no. We'll get into divergence another week because I need to read up on it before I try and explain it. Because I struggle. I just know, like, I know specific instances like, hey, if you've got a, a um, a, t an a, a texture array? Is that what they call it? Is it? Oh, no, sorry. An array texture, and you're indexing into which texture that you're going to be um, using. Is that the right way around? No, if you have an array... Oh, is it an array of samplers? See, I can't even remember which way it is. Basically, uh, this array of um, textures, and if you... You have to keep the same index for that warp, I think. Otherwise, you get undefined results. Bah! See, why did I try and do this? I just said I wouldn't be able to explain this, and then I tried to explain it like a fucking idiot. Right, okay. Um, anyway, <laughs> anyway, we've got this compass stuff now. I should actually commit that before, uh, before I break anything else. Yes. What have we got here? Cool. That actually is quite nice. Good call, Darius. I'm liking this a lot. Actually, that's really good. Um, cool. So add compass angle and compass angle, compass deer, and compass deer move. What are we at? Good grief, time is getting away from me. There is the saying, don't thank me, thank magic. Oh, I do thank magic. Like every day. I Fucking love magic. Right. Let's get rid of these guys. Whoops. That's just accelerating towards them. Um, cool. Uh, go fuck off. I can see you over there. Right. Now we've got maybe a minute of peace. Why am I so bad at games? Why do I play games? Why do I make games? This is all stupid. I don't make games. I procrastinate with engines forever. 
I've got to improve at that over this year. Um, okay, so collisions. This this is going to get interesting. Um, we want to do lots of collision tests in parallel, and we want to be able to do. Sometimes we want to be able to just know if we're overlapping with something. Sometimes we're going to want to know um, what we're overlapping, um, and generally things. Like, it's going to be classes of things. Like, hey, am I overlapping with enemy bullets? You know? Then I need to damage myself. Um, distractions. Brrr. Missed! You hurt my hearse. I'll just leave that on for a while. Um, yeah, so we're going to need something that can handle thousands of things in general. Um, for... Potentially a fairly small world size. We're going to have to discuss that as well. And, um, yeah, we can... Because this is just a toy engine, we can make up any restrictions we like. So we can use really recent stuff in GL. I'm quite happy to use Compute for something like this, for example. Um, but let's think about the problem. So what I'm going to do is just get the doodling thing working. And so now we should have this... Okay, so what we could do, for a start, is have collision... Yes, this is going well. Um, is have collision masks. So we have our um, ships, for example, and we could draw all of these into a texture. Um, in one pass. And then this acts as kind of like a collision map. So then we can do another pass where um, the bullets position themselves in the vertex shader. And then in the fragment shader, they look to see underneath themselves in the um, collision mask they're checking against if there are any pixels colored in. So the ships drew themselves and then... All these bullets have drawn themselves, and then in the fragment shader, rather than emitting a new color, what they're going to do is just say, hey, in this texture, do a look up and just see if there's anything there. Um, and if there is, we need to write a result somewhere. And this allows us to, again, do pixel-perfect collisions, because it's going to be based on the shape of this and the shape of this, because we're checking pixel by pixel. We can do this in parallel. That's pretty cool. Um, but notice we're doing things by mask. We can't just say, um, like, 10,000 arbitrary things and compare them all against each other. Here we're doing uh, something a lot more limited. Um, so what we could have is, let's say we uh, just define an SSBO, um, which is a shader storage buffer object, which is basically just a big block of memory we can write to as well as read from um, in our shaders. If all of these guys had an ID, had like an index, so oh, okay, this is bullet zero and one and two, um, and when they saw something, they would just, like, if one of these um, fragments um, was not, yeah, if one of these fragments was colored in, then we they write into their specific index in the array. Um, so let's, uh, wow, I'm really inconsistent with colors. So zero sees nothing, so this is going to remain zero. Um, one sees nothing. And two, a bunch of these fragments are going to see this ship here. Well, they're not going to know it's a ship. They're just going to know when they sample the texture, it's not zero. Um, then they could write a number into here. And so we just do an atomic set. And all of those fragments will just set that. We probably don't... I don't even know like, if we need to do it atomically if we're just setting it to one, if everything is only ever going to set it to one, can we just allow them to collide? Because they're all going to set it to one. Like, is that a problem? Uh, anyone who's done any work with Atomics on the GPU, I'd really love to hear your opinions on this, because this is completely new to me. The one downside with this is this is only telling us if we collided with something. It definitely doesn't tell us what we collided with. Um, so what we could do is we could say each of, um, we could have bit masks, essentially. Um, so all of these, like when these ships wrote their colors, what they would actually write instead is an ID. 
Um, so we have VEC4, which we use for colors. Um, that's four 32-bit numbers. Um, so we've got a 128-bit ID, which we, means we could uniquely identify 128 things in a single mask. Um, but this, this I'm pretty sure won't work. Um, and the reason is it would be great for reading. Like at this point, each of these fragments would read and they would, a bunch of them would see, oh yeah, like it, it's, um, it's ID 00001001. Cool. And then they just do an atomic or into um, this slot here. And that's great because each one, like even if um, these fragments over here were, were um, colliding with a different ship, let's just do this white guy in blue for some reason. Um, they would do an atomic ore. Let's say they got. Let's. Uh, the blue ship is ID zero zero one zero one zero, whatever. Yeah, this will be zero. Who knows? <laughs> they're going to atomically ore those together, and they're going to combine the IDs. But the problem with this is it limits us to one hundred and twenty-eight different things for a start, and for a second. Um, if two ships overlap, is that okay? I mean, it's okay if we're able to um, combine both of them, both of the fragments together, um, which we can't do without ordering, um, because we would basically have to do some form of blending. Um, Shimera might have some insights on this because he's done more with some of the. Um, transparency and things like this but basically if we have a bunch of ships and the ships start overlapping i'm not sure how we all these like values together because only one of the fragments is going to make it to be written into the fbo unless we don't write into an fbo again we could have another ssbo so the first bunch of guys could write um into an ssbo um and then we can read from that and then do we really need to do that in the fragment shader um and do we really want the same resolution? Because this stuff's really fast. Um, like we can do this, you know, 1080p, no problem, um, and do pixel perfect collisions. That's fine. Um, but if we're writing to SSBOs, do we? Is that still quick? I don't don't know. Maybe it's quick enough. Um, the other option, of course, is we just lower the resolution. I mean, our game might end up being, yeah, it's a 4K, like the world is 4K. Um, but we could store the collisions at a much coarser resolution. And then basically we're getting bucketing. Um, so we would divide this space up. Let's just draw another one. Um, another play field. With some ships. Dun, dun, bah, 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 bah. And then we would divide this world up into chunks. So rather than per pixel information, we'd have per chunk information. And then each of these is going to have an index in an SSBO. And just if something is within that, we can write into that thing and say, hey, ID, yeah, you know, zero is in here and ID five is in here or whatever. And then on the second pass, we can compare those things. Maybe that's a way to do it. Um, what's nice about this is we get a lot of parallelism. Uh, we can do one pass where a bunch of guys just write some information into a buffer. And then another one um, where we accumulate that information. I originally was thinking maybe we could, uh, maybe we avoid like this SSBO thing. Like originally I was thinking like, oh yeah, we can have a lower GLSL version if we just write this data out into an S into a uh, frame buffer object, an FBO. Um, which might work. We still have to pull it down though. Like to, to do work on it, we still have to pull this information down. Um, so there's that. The other thing is like we we can totally combine these approaches. We can have masks uh, we can use for telling us, hey, has um, my unit overlapped with something? Is there just a collision? Give me a one or a zero to tell me if I'm colliding with something in this mask. 
and we could have a different approach um, for a much smaller set. So at this point where we're starting to go, you know, we can have SSBOs in and out and we do the chunking ourselves, then maybe, um, maybe we just start brute forcing um, doing access line bounding box checks. Checkses? Checks. Um, by the way, I, I've never done this before. I don't know if anything I'm like, I'm, some of the technical details, yes, I know we can do these um, kinds of things, but I don't know if these are sensible or if I've missed something that would make a, a particular technique unviable. Please shout out in the chat and let me know. I'm very interested in this stuff. Um, so let's forget pixel perfect for a second and let's just go back to bounding boxes. Everything has a bounding box. Like, so this might be the bullet's bounding box and this might be a ship's bounding box. Um, if we want to do access align bounding box checks, these are pretty cheap. And like GPUs can do a shit ton of stuff in parallel. So maybe we throw a compute at this. Maybe we can say like, I want to know, I have like a thousand things. Tell me which of them are colliding with what. And we can just set off a bunch of compute jobs um, that all they do is just each one just um, does like these access align checks against a whole bunch of other ones. And we just kind of see um, what kind of performance we get out of that. And then if that sucks, of course, we can start doing more traditional um, techniques that are used in um, collision checking. So one of the things that if I was doing this on the CPU, um, there are pretty standardized techniques of how you would do this. You, you take your world, um, you define a hash function um, that's essentially going to bucket regions of the world together. It's called spatial hashing. Um, and you, yeah, you just hash hash all the positions of the things and the ones that end up in the same buckets you can compare against each other to see if um, there are collisions there. You're just limiting um, how many things each um, actor is having to check against for collisions. So I don't know. But I really want to use the GPU. That's the one thing is I, I want to use a GPU for this uh, because I've never done it before. Um, also because I'd like us to be able to get a lot of collisions done in parallel. So I think definitely let's do the masks and do this very first version. This one where we just, hey, I'm colliding with something. I write a one into my thing or maybe some extra data. But we'll start with just one or zero to say I'm colliding with something. Um, we could even change this atomic set for an atomic add and it will tell us how many fragments are overlapping with another thing. Um, and that might be interesting. I'm not sure. Um, we could do that. And then what we're communicating each time is we're going to be pulling the SSBO down and then um, our actors can see if they've collided with something. They can just say, have I collided with anything? And we can give them a yes or no. The other comp component to this, like we needed more, is API. Um, so how do we say that we want to know about collisions? Um, I mean, we can, we can have something like the bullets have a mask, uh, mask ID, which is zero or something. Um, or maybe we just say, maybe it's just identified by bullet and we do the IDs in the background. We don't really need to specify um, the mask there. We just want to say, yeah. Sorry, I'm kind of brain dumping here. I'm just thinking, okay, so we're going to do this mask collision thing. Um, how do we say that, um, how do we say for a given actor type that we want their, them to be involved in collisions? We could just say collision is true. Or we could do it on a kind of request basis. Um, because traditionally what we've done before is this kind of stuff. We say, hey, am I touching a bullet? Um, and this is a immediate request. This is saying, hey, am I touching anything right now? Um, 
but this kind of requires us to iterate through the other actors and see who we're touching or at least even if we're doing like spatial hashing or something like this there is some iteration that's been going on we're going to be doing some collision checks but when we have something like this collisions almost seem like a resource it's it's something like you're saying just I want to have um, like every frame I'm going to want to know about collisions I, it's, it's it's percolating around my head I can't quite get it out of my head of what, what I want to say but this is a kind of query and a collision thing feels like a kind of ongoing query we're going to be needing this every frame um, so why not specify it like we specify resources on the other hand everything that happens inside here is already happening per frame anyway so what we could just do is have this macro notice that we're requesting uh, for collisions with bullets and now it knows that it needs to write um, to do collisions masks for both of these maybe that's enough I don't know the other thing we're going to need to do is be able to set the world size and the world of resolution so the resolution of the um, collisions kind of annoying because we want we would want to be able to specify that per map probably I don't know what do you guys think about this um, I'm not sure if any of these like basically first off has any of that made sense <laughs> And if so, is there any kind of um, avenue here that looks promising? I mean, the other thing that's um, interesting purely from a design point of view is the fact that once we start doing collisions like this, we're always going to have one frame latency. On the collision information which is fine basically we're going to draw uh the visuals we're going to draw into some texture which is representing like all their positions um and then we're going to have the collision information the the following frame and i think that's fine Th these feel like ongoing queries then i think all this function is going to do is going to well, it's actually going to do a couple of things it's going to go and ask the engine have you got, um, I'm an alien, have you got any collision information between aliens and bullets? Um, and here's my ID. Um, and if it hasn't, it's going to set up the collision information so that next frame it will be available. And this is going to return nil. So yeah, that actually makes sense. I don't think we need to do things as resources then this kind of uh, touching by mask um, yeah we, we can just do this in the fly so the first time it's just going to return nil regardless because we're not going to have any information ready um, and the second time yeah we should have some data so we can actually start producing real data do, 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 do. That feels so much better now than that janky thing we had before. An eerie silence comes from the chat. I think I'm not making sense. Let's just start tinkering around and see what we get. But this is where I've been wanting to get to, basically. It's like uh, we want to start looking into different options for... Um, collision detection. So how are we going to do masks? Um, well, let's look at rendering. How do we do rendering now? We 
return one value currently. Um, There's one call to instance cube per actor type. Let's have a look at, was it main? No, just daft, I expect, daft or lesbian. Yeah. Um, instance cube stream, okay. Nope, that's just setting it up. It'll be under actors then. Draw instant access, here we are. Yeah, per actor kind, we have one call to this. So let's just say that we... Yeah, let's just render into an FBO instead. And then the second attachment can just be the collision information. That means we're going to be swapping out that second attachment a bunch, but that could be okay. Um, let's go look at our... If we jump back to our REPL. Let's look at our actors. Oops. I just fucked a load of things up. There we go. Let's inspect this object. We've got an entry per kind of actor. And currently it's just the two arrays that we use um, that we swap between for storing the ships. Let's say that um, we're going to extend this. And this is one of the times that now I really re regret using a struct <laughs> because um, it is not going to like being changed. But let's say we have the collision texture in here. Okay, so what would its initial value be? Be nil because we need to set it up. Not everything is going to be doing collisions. So, and its type is going to be or null, and otherwise it's going to be a texture. If I do this and just say continue, what's this? Continue, and then things are going to break pretty quickly. That's all right. We'll just restart the thing in a second. We'll have to do a recompile like savages. Um, so we're going to need um, something in the collision system. And maybe to start with, we just say they all have one of these textures just so we can start doing some prototyping. So let's see where um, make actors is called, which is this, and it's get actors arrays. Um, and let's just specify a default collision texture, which is gen collision texture, fine. Um, we can now go and define that function. make texture, no initial contents, uh, the dimensions are going to be, let's just do 2048 by 2048 for all of them. Um, the element type, um, kind of interesting. I'm not sure what's actually valid here as far as this goes. Let's just see what um oops no. See what the documentation says. Element type. Hmm. Kind of annoying. 
why my documentation isn't the most useful here. Um, specify an element type. If the initial con contents is a nested list, you must either specify the element type to be a structure type, yada, yada, yada. No, that's not the case. We're not providing initial contents. So we've got a bunch of information here that doesn't really apply to us, which is kind of annoying. Um, Ah, let's just do a VEC4 for now, and we can um, actually... Fuck it, let's just see if we can do an int. I don't know if they have integer um, text types. I used to know this stuff. But it's gone right out of my head. Um, let's just try and... Let's actually get to the REPL and try and make something. Doot. not waste too much so one by one texture um, with element type int. Do not like that. Could not find a suitable conversion uh, from int to an internal texture format. Well if you're not going to tell me what this is then you could at least give me a better error on um, what's available. So it's trying to find a pixel format that would be allowed. Okay. We can have in date vect2 by the look of it. I need to make a decent error message for this because this is really shitty. So continue. So if we went with a. Um, um, let's do a vect4. There's no point doing any smaller than that. Cool, so that is allowed. You know, free that thing. And we can make ourselves a texture. Good. Right, so now whenever an actor is initialized, they're gonna get a texture, which is fucking tiny. 2048 by 2048. Eventually this is gonna be related to our world size and or like and resolution. Um, so you might be able to say, hey, the world is a thousand by a thousand, but we only need um, five by five pixels of accuracy, for example. Um, so that, compile that. Um, so if we were to define a new kind of actor, let's just take this new kind of alien, new thing. That is really not, whatever. Um, and remove this because we don't care and compile it and it freaks out oh yeah this is the type fuck ups because we redefine that struct uh, okay this is not going to get better is it nope okay <sighs> what should we do um, well we're going to have to restart anyway recompile and just go with it Kind of annoying though. I'm worried that I'm gonna. Um... Oh fuck it! We need to restart again. We restart again. Now if we look at our actors, like bullet, we can see that this has a collision texture, which is a 2048 by 2048, and it has, um, ah, RGBA8 sign normalized, SNOM. I need to look up what that means. <laughs> Fuck. Reference card. Ah, no, not a deal. Let's just see if we got the wiki. There we go.
Damn it. Okay, so we got this slightly wrong. Um... Uh, yeah, we've got a signed normalized integer. So this is going to be a float number, which is actually being stored just as a normalized int, I think. I think that's how that works. Um, where really I wanted something like this, an RGBA I. Um, let's look at make texture and see what happens if I try and use that. Make texture, oops. Nil with dimensions. Blah. One by one, and the element type. Cool, yeah, that works. And if we inspect that, yeah, that's more like what I was hoping for. Is what it is, not a problem. Um, what we can do is we can. Um, map over the things in our hash table, in our actors hash table. Let's just go and uh, inspect this guy. My, oh no, it's not middle click. What is it then? Right click, inspect. There we go. So, we're gonna map over this hash table and we are going to replace the collision texture. So, actors, collision texture, um, V, let's free the current one and replace it with, oops. Actually, just do call that function gen collision texture. K is defined but never used. We don't care. So now, when we look at actors, they have a texture. We really should put the element type in the texture print object because it's kind of annoying not to be able to see that. Image format is RGBA 88i. Good. Okay. So now we've got an integer format. I'm not sure how actually sampling that, that works on the GPU. So we can test that soon as well. Um, actually, we can use... Oh, blimey, that would be interesting. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to give that a try. We'll see. Anyway. All quiet on the Western Front. Because everyone just ran away. That's fine, too. It is a, a Wednesday. There are things to be done. Hey, Zymas. Right. Okay, so now we've got that. How do we write into it? Can we write into... I, I know so little about integer integral, so... I'm just looking through here to find any information I can about these integral formats. Okay. Um, no, not those ones. I'm just wondering if there's any limitations with regards to, ah, okay. These formats must be supported for textures. They may be supported for render buffers, but OpenGL to, the OpenGL specification does not require it. Ah, okay. Um, maybe we'll just use float textures then? <laughs> we'll start with that and we can just use a, there's a bits to, like float to bits function, I think. In um, GLSL, so we can just put our ID into the float using that. 
Okay, let's uh, change this to just be effect four. Um, oh, what are you? I can't remember the damn format now. You an eight back four? Yeah. Inspect actors again. Let's go and have a look. Collision texture, RGB eight. Yep, yeah, that's fine. Okay. <sighs> so what shall be law? Okay. So we are going to have a we're going to have an FBO that we're writing into. So let's just do act as FBO. Um, and when we initialize, where is that done? Probably in Daft. we should set that value. So the actors FBO is going to be an FBO. This is a little frustrating. Um, the reason I'm, I'm getting my head a little stuck now is because we're going to render once and we're going to render all the actors into this FBO. The first attachment is going to be the visual stuff. And the second attachment is going to be one of those collision textures. Um, and I'm just trying to think on uh, how it's going to work because our collision texture can be a completely different size from the area of the way of rendering for like normal display. Um, and I'm pretty sure that FBO attachments have to be the same size, which is annoying. So do we render a larger area and just discard anything that's outside the viewport area? Or do we do these as separate passes, at which point it's a little more expensive? Fuck it, we'll do it as separate passes to begin with because um, we just need to get going. Um, we need to get something. Can we do a, an FBO without um, any attachments? No. They must have at least one. Okay. Um, let's uh, just have attachment zero then. We're gonna be swapping this thing out so soon. I don't think it really matters. I think we'll be able to share the same, we'll just share the same vertex um, shader as, actually, ah, oh, god damn it. These are going to be very similar shaders, actually. Um, yeah, let's just, for now I'm just going to make a pipeline with a different name. Um, Right, collision map, whatever. It's going to use exactly the same stuff. Um, because technically we only need to write one or zero, like black or white or whatever, into um, the result from this. But it doesn't matter for now if we're writing the actual color. Um, we'll control more of this later. And it'll be, if this is not um, 
yeah, transparent, then we're going to write some data into the resulting FBO. Ah, oh, we'll get to that, we'll get to that. My head's just trying to think of all the different ways of doing the um, collisions, because there's no one good answer for this. Um, just make my head spin a bit. Yeah, for now it's exactly the same. All we're going to do is change the um, pipeline we're using. I've got to fix the um, settings that are causing it to give uh, those notes. I will do that eventually. So now when we've got a draw, where is it? Draw instant actors. Instant actors. Ugh. Words. Um, we can do write the collision mask as well. Okay. Um, currently, that's going to be rendering to the screen because we haven't told it otherwise. So if we commented out this, we would still see stuff. Um, if we commented out this, however, as well, uh, we would not. This one we want to write into an FBO. So we're going to say with FBO um, bound, I think it is. Yes. With FBO bound. We are going to bind the specific FBO, and that is going to be the actor's FBO. This guy. Cool. So now that's writing this whole scene into um, this FBO. We're also going to need to set a clear color. So if I just comment this out for a second, we'll see nothing is being drawn. Um, I'm going to set the clear color here. Hmm. Actually, that's a good point. Need to clear that FBO. Um, but I want to clear it with black, so I guess I'm going to be setting the clear color a lot. Um, with set F. Um, actually, we just do this. Clear color. That should work. Cool. Now, hopefully, um, we're writing these ships. Actually, we're writing. What are we writing? Currently, we're writing everything into the same FBO. So it'll be exactly like this, um, except with a black background. I mean, I guess one thing we can do is check that that's correct. Um, and a simple way of doing that is just going to be to draw a texture. Um, uh, how do we do this? I'm trying to think of the simplest way of doing this. Nineveh has a draw texture function. Nineveh has draw text. Sure. Um, and we just give it a texture or a sampler. Ideally, we'd give it a sampler. Um, let's go and make a sampler for this thing. So if we go and look at the actor's uh, FBO, it has one attachment, which is this. Um, that attachment also has a texture, which is this is the texture that's holding this GPU array. Um, if we sample that, uh, we get a sampler. And let's just define a var for that for now. So let's do def var uh, fbo uh, debug sampler is that thing. And then we'll give this to draw text. And what we see, oh, it's pretty cool actually. That's, um, ah, now that's interesting. Let's uh, move this guy down to the bottom left. Notice we've only got the aliens in here. And the reason is we're clearing the FBO on each loop. If we take the clear FBO out, we'll start getting smears, as you can see there, because we're, we're never clearing it. Uh, if I fly the ship around. Whoop. 
But basically, this is what we want to do. We want to draw the scene and we also want to draw into some other buffer that we can look up in and just see if there's something there. Uh, but we want a separate one of these for each... Um, yeah, for each kind of actor, which is why we gave each actor their own texture to write things into. Um, but now we need to swap out the attachments per thing. Now that's going to be just, I've never, I've just not done it before, so I'm not sure what, how that's going to work. So, um, what happens if we, let's take the actor's FBR. Um, and let's go and look at its attachment again. It's zero. Um, we're going to go and give it another texture, completely different one. Um, we are going to get get hash. Um, what is it going to be? Let's say that, uh, let's do the ship from actors. Cool, and then we'll get the actors collision texture. There's that texture. Now I want to make, um, this only has one image in it, so if I just get that, I mean, um, it's a, the GL parlance is um, image, but we call it a GPU array, uh, it just happens to be backed by a texture. Um, AK Karam, hi all, hello! What do you know about doing collision checks on the GPU? Could really use some input. <laughs> um, Let's have a look. So, that's the GPU array. I'm going to set this as the new attachment. Where is it? Attachment zero. So if we just do this, set F attachment zero, blam, like that, what happens? Oh. Oh, we don't have a set of attachment. Hmm. That seems shitty. How are you meant to change these out then? Oh no, wait! I was trying to set attachment texture, and I actually just want to set the attachment. Because the attachment itself is the GPU array. We've done that. And now, there's nothing happening. Because the sampler we're drawing down here is for that, um, that old texture, this guy here. Um, let's uh, bring him down here again. Defar old FBO text. Not sure if we still got the sample of that guy, have we? Yeah, we do. It's up here. Nice. Defar old um, FBO sample. Oh no, we actually we, we defined a variable for this, didn't we? Where is he? D -d 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 FBO debug sampler. Nice. Cool. Right, then we don't need to store that. So we need to create a new sampler that we can test with. So let's just... Um... There we go. There's our... Oops. There's the texture. We're going to sample it. Therefore, oh, come on, Chris. New FBO um, sampler. So it did work. It's a little weird. We've still got the same scene, but it's rendered in. I mean, it's blurry as well, because we're still not doing that clear. Let's just do that. Um, we're still rendering everything into it, because we're going to have to do this swap per thing. Let's, um, where's that attachment shit that I just did? So before we draw the actor's collision mask, we're going to need to change the attachment of the FBO. 
to this. Now we can bring back in clear. And this texture should now only have the ship in it. Cool. This is going to be the collision mask for the ship. And then, if we make a, where is it? Defar. Fine. The attachment. The actor collision texture for bullets. Is it bullet or bullets? Let's just do bullet. Yes, there it is. Um, if we just sample that. And defar. I'm going to put a, one of these um, samplers in along with each of the collision textures in that struct. Um, it's going to mean we're going to have to do another recompile. But they're so useful that... Okay, bullet... Ooh, uh, fuck. Oh yeah, I changed the wrong thing. Whoops. There we go. So now this one should only hold bullets. So we're rendering each of the individual components out to a different mask. And this is how we're going to be able to compare different types of actors. Like we're going to do collision detection for different kinds of actors. Man, I'm looking forward to actually knowing what the fuck I'm talking about so I can <laughs> speak on this with a bit of authority. But this is how we learn. I get Graham saying, nothing. Uh, Blue Winged is asking, why do some variables have earmuffs? What does that mean? Uh, globals, yeah, it's, um, I've got a little video on this on my YouTube stuff. Um, the earmuffs are used um, for dynamic variables. So ones that can be, uh, yeah, that have dynamic extent. I've got a, uh, so yeah, if you, let me, let me just find the link, one second. I jump over to this machine and just bring up YouTube. YouTube. So yeah, we use the um, asterisk earmuffs to say that it's a special variable. Um, ugh, adverts, fuck off. Nobody cares. Um, we use plus on either side to say that it's a constant. Now getting my faces appearing in YouTube right in mind. Who wants to see this? Right. Def var, def parameter, and def constant. Okay. I think I mentioned it in here. Let me just drop this link into the chat. Boop. Yeah, so we use, um, for the dynamic or special variables, we use these kind of earmuffs for constants. Oh, fuck you. You incoherent typer. Um, we use the plus. Is there anything else? I can't remember any other convention like that. It's not enforced in any way. You totally don't have to do it, but pretty much everyone does. Um, and it's just kind of common courtesy to say, hey, this has different evaluation semantics. Or this rather, this, this has different semantics that you wouldn't otherwise be able to tell from the name. Okay. Now, the one problem I am seeing is it's not showing up very clearly on the bullets, but let's try and look at one of the other samplers. That guy is looking pretty squashed, right? We're getting this same scene, but we know that this scene, let's have a look at the, uh, rather than just saying we know this, um, viewport resolution of the current viewport is 400 odd by 500 odd. Now we know that this texture, because we made it, is 2048 by 2048. Why is this so big in that texture? And the answer is because the viewport is weird. Um, FPOs have a um, have this extra little feature in Keppel that when you bind an FBO, by default, it'll also set the viewport size um, for when you're doing your rendering. And that's really convenient. Um, 
Uh, you can also turn that off by setting with viewport to nil. But it seems that when we set the attachment, we don't change the attachment viewport, um, which is kind of interesting. I think that's a bug. Um, so I'm probably going to file an issue for that because by that sounds like the right thing to do. The attachment has a viewport. Let's have a look. Let's go get an attachment for the actors FBO. Yeah, and I think there's an attachment viewport. Yes, this guy. And each a different attachment would have its own. That's interesting though. That says turn 24 by 248. I am confused. So. Oh wait, no, that's actually correct, isn't it? Um, no, it's doing the right thing. <laughs> It's doing the right thing, but we don't want this behavior in this case. Um, we actually just want to render to the screen size worth of pixels. Um, it's rendering this entire scene across the whole um, 2000 by 2000 pixels. Yeah. So this is one of the times we want to turn with viewport to nil. Um, and we want to use the viewport like that. <laughs> so that little guy down there, I'm going to have to make that bigger just to be able to see it. Draw text rather than bottom left is going to be big. Um, that's our collision mask. Um, is that how we want to do it? It's interesting. Um, let's go back to the bullets because they make for an interesting case actually. Um, bullet sampler. So we start shooting a load of bullets. Oops. But they are disappearing the instant they go outside of our screen, which is not what we want in this case. We want them to carry off across the collision map. Hmm. Now that's going to be to do with how we're rendering then. So if we turn off this and we bring it back so we're... Uh, oh, shit. <laughs> I can't see because of that bloody debug rendering. One second. Um, there he is. Stay. That's super confusing, because <laughs> it just looks like the bullets are leaving this thing. Okay, right. This is exactly the same scale now. We want to do things a little differently. We want to say for this block, The, there's a screen height variable, isn't it? We actually set this right back at the beginning. Where was it? Set f. Oh, I don't remember. Um, but we modify it in one of the other test files. Screen height and game units. There we go. Up, 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 up. It's twenty forty eight. Let's see what happens when we do this. Just for this block. Woof! Didn't like that. Now we turn our ship and, oh, don't drive away, just shoot bullets. Oh, they're not making it out either. Hmm. Wonder why I'm not using this correctly.
Oh, I'm an idiot. I know exactly why. Um, the bullets delete themselves when they're off screen. Fool. So if we go here, look, when... Or off screen, then they die. So let's take out that and then just shoot some bullets. And then they go all the way to the edge of the collision map. Now we'll turn on this again and they all die. So, actually, let's, that would look cooler if there were still some on the collision mask somewhere. So let's do this. And then do this. And then... Are you still there? Hmm. I do know why. Okay, so the reason there's still some in the mask is... There are no longer any bullets which means that there's no longer any bullets to draw into the mask, so the, so the mask isn't being cleared, which is incorrect behavior. So now we need to go back to our actors. Where do we have clear? See, this is only when count is greater than zero. We don't want that. Um, maybe we can do the collision drawing first? Tilted head question mark? Right, no. Um, ugh, fuck. No. No, 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 no. We could set clear color. That would be no problem. We can move that outside. Um, we can swap the which the what well, the attachment is, and we can do the clear of the FBO, which means the FBO would have to be bound. So we can do this way, and and then if there's anything to actually draw, um, then we'll do that. How about that? How, what does it think of that? Okay, now it's gone. Nice, sweet. So if we remove the off-screen thing again, so we can blast loads of bullets off into infinity. And then over here, we just do delete, delete, and compile. Right, now they just die. And then they're all gone. Brilliant. Because that was an issue. Sweet. Okay, so now we have... Um, we need an alternate concept to off-screen. Um, we need to be off-world or out of world, or something like this. And we just we say in world, and we're just not in that. Um, this is super lazy right now. Look at this. Terrible. Um, where is off screen used? Where are we? There we go. Grip. Oh no, we don't need to grip for this one second. Where is off screen used? Just here. Cool. We're going to change this uh, terminology to be on screen. Um, and the reason we're doing this is because off world sounds stupid, but in world or, yeah, in screen, in world. Those at least consistent and they sound okay. Um, so we're going to do this and, and just invert all these things. And this does need fixing, obviously, but we will get to that. Okay, and we're going to need to, for now, we're just going to say our world is um, 2048, so we're going to do the same kind of hack as before, except it will be 1024, not 2048, will it? In screen? Still sounds wrong, doesn't it? Anyway, let's, oh, fuck, come back here. Oh yeah, we've murdered the logic and not the test. Okay, so that's still working, or we could say, in the world. I don't like that name, we're gonna have to change that. But now if you look at the collision map, they're gonna get outside and then they will die. Um, if we look at actors, 
and inspect that object and go look at the bullets. Actually, you can already see these arrays are empty. So those bullets did die, but they just did it when they left the entire world. The size of the world and all that kind of stuff is stuff we're going to be able to parameterize soon. But for now, we'll just do 2048 because we're hard coding loads of stuff anyway. Okay, so we have different objects writing into different um, collision textures. That sounds like a start. I'm going to um, go and fuck around with those that struct again. Um, so debug. I'll just call it the call sampler. We know it's for debugging. Yep, it's going to be recklessly. No, we'll just change it. So that's been done whenever we set up the collision texture. We're going to do this. We're going to let call be the texture. We're going to say call. And we're also going to define the call sampler, which is just sampling. Oops, sample call. I'm going to kill everything and restart everything because structs can't be redefined like uh, interactively. Can't be redefined interactively, unlike classes, which can. So we're going to do a quick recompile again. Darius is heading off. I have to leave earlier again. Thanks, Bears. See you all next week. Thank you for coming around, man. And thanks for the uh, tip on magic. I will be using that everywhere now. What else? Um... Oof, does not like that. Oh, I know why. Um, that was one of our little test things we had. Let's say continue and everything should be okay. Let's go to the test alien code and we'll recompile that and everything should be running again. We still have to go and set up the clear color because <laughs> haven't made that part of the system yet. But okay. Now what we should be able to do is if we go and look at the draw. We should be able to go and get the coal sampler for let's see if I can get this right, get hash particular kind, so it will be in this case um, bullets, bullet rather, in actors. So actors is our hash table. If we look down the mini buffer, we can see the hash table with five things in it. That's the kinds of different kinds of actors. That's fine. Uh, we're going to get the one named bullet out of there, and then we're going to get its sampler. And if we do that, it fucks right up. Call sampler is undefined. Oh yeah, of course it's going to be um, actors call sampler because that is a struct. Um, oh yeah, continue, lab support continue, there we go. So now if we're shooting bullets, there we can see our bullets, that's great. If we go over here and change this to ship, we can now see our ship. We can fly them off wherever, right off screen. Bring it back in, there we are. Um, Aliens, there's none of them here yet, but when they, one of them arrives, then we'll be able to see its collision mask as well. So we're just drawing into a bigger texture, and then we're going to use this information for collision um, in another part. Oh, right. AK Kram saying, um, I guess the plan is to create separate FBOs for different kinds of objects, combine them in some way, and then to get to get clues about collision and then read back and interpret the results somehow. That's exactly it. So what we're gonna do is when the ship renders, look at this guy right, right here. This is what's gonna happen. The ship's gonna be here. We're gonna render the ship and in the ship's fragment shader, we're gonna look up into this texture here, this exact texture, right? And when the fragments of our ship are overlapping um, the fragments of the alien in this one, we know we've collided with something. And we can have thousands of aliens, and it will always be able to tell us in constant time, or in like one pass, rather, 
or in constant time, um, that we've collided with something. This one is... Um, Oh yeah, the last part you're uh, curious about, how do we get anything back? We could code the collisions into the color, but that would still mean we would have like a big old texture that we have to go and read up in. Uh, what we're going to use is we're going to use an SSBO. Um, so, where should we stick this? Who knows? Let's do it in render. Find a struct. We'll do it down here. F struct G. Um, clean the info. And so what we're going to have. So we're going to have actor. I don't know. Slots. I don't know. What, I don't know what to call this anyway. I'll just call it actors for now. Um, its type is going to be a uint or just an int. No, let's do a uint. Um, And we're going to have, let's just say, 10,000 them for now. Or 20,000. Since we were running at 21,000, okay, let's just say 20,000 for now. Actually, no, we've got a, we've got a value for this, haven't we? We've got the uh, max, content, max content count? No, that wasn't it. Well, max context. Max actor count. There we go. 40,000. So whatever that was at this point, we're going to use that value. Um... Okay, so we've got a struct, then we're gonna make a GPU array um, whose initial contents are nothing um, and whose element count is that collision info. And it's gonna freak out! Dimensions are not optional when reserving a buffer block. Good point! That is a fine thing to know. So um, the dimensions in this case are just gonna be one uh, because we only need one instance of all this data. And we can say make SSBO um, from this guy. Um, and now this is a buffer that we can pass to our shaders that we can write into. So, how are we for time? Oh, we got three minutes left. Damn it. Um, so what we'll end up doing in our collision stuff is in the vertex shader, we can just say um, collision is... Um, collision info and we're going to say it's an SSBO and it's going to be a standard 430 or whatever layout um, see how that all compiled right now in this shader um, we can write to this buffer so let's just do that let's do that really quickly we'll just write some junk in there um, but we're going to set f let's just go and get the with slots um, called actors from um, collision let's compile that and then we're going to say um, what are we going to do we're just going to get a ref of actors zero cool we're going to set f that to one whoa it did not like that why didn't it like that um, oh yeah it's a uint and it was and we've given it an in so it doesn't like that fine that's no problem actually um Oops. Cool. Um, so that is only going to work if we actually start passing up um, our buffer. What did, what did we do with that? Oh, shit. We made the SSB and we lost it. Fool. Oh, well. Let's just make another one. Um, one of those. One of those. Step four. Temp zero. There we go. There's a temp. Um, what was this called? Collision. Let's go back into actors. And we go into draw. Draw instant actors. And here, we'll pass in collision, which is going to be temp zero. And other than those warnings, everything's fine. So now, um, what we should be able to do is go pull G. Uh, let's do pull 1G, actually. And do temp, I could type at all, temp zero. Um, it's interesting that it just gave me a collision info object. That's kind of cool. I think. 
therefore our temp one is that. Um, and then I can't remember anything, so collision info um, actors of temp one is some C array. And if we do a ref C out of that, <laughs> it's nowhere near what we wanted. Balls. That should have worked. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't good. That's not even close to one. I'm a bit confused now. But it is the end of the stream. So maybe I'll just kind of slip away and quietly work on this another time. Um, let's just see what's going on in here. Yeah, this is the kind of garbage I would expect from the, the thing being uninitialized. Um, that's an SSBO. It's all set up and stuff. We pass it in there when we're drawing the instant actors. And in here, we've got this stuff where we write in the number one into the first slot. I mean, we're not doing any synchronization, so there could be all kinds of fuck ups going on, but still. Bit weird. Oh well, we'll have to deal with that next time. Um, but that is rough. That's roughly what I want to go to. Uh, holy shit! The um, bandwidth is dropping like crazy. What is going on? Is it? Uh, CSE Mark question: What Lisp is being used here? We are using Common Lisp. I am, I'm going to actually wait a second just because I don't know how bad the connection is right now. It's saying like zero. The uh, the 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 uh, data rate is going up and down like crazy. Um, yeah, Pom the Pimps just let me know. For fuck's sake, we're right at the end. Well, that's super annoying. What is going on here? I'm a. Uh, I'm gonna actually have to cut off the stream because we're just getting no data now. So sorry for those who are watching the uh, recording. I'm gonna just ap apologize to the people in the chat. Um, So I'm going to have to quit if this isn't going to recover in the next min. Um, at the end of the stream. Um, yeah, so that's a rather um, unglamorous and there's a brilliant word for it that's just eluding me. Um, but thank you so much for watching. Uh, we'll work on actually getting data back um, from the shaders next week. So we can start using these collision masks for thing. The uh, thing I wanted to get across was the fact that... Um, yeah, if we're writing it to an FBO, we're still having to pull those values out of the uh, resulting texture. Whereas if we're writing to an SSBO, we can force that data into an individual point... Um, I guess we want an atomic set there, I just realized. Uh, that might be it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next time.